Naimbag abigat, marahay na hapon, maayong gabi. Magandang buhay, good day to everyone. We are the Tourism Warriors from University of the East Manila. I am Donna Liza R. Oximoso. Good morning everyone, this is Yusei P. Malauba. Hi, my name is Julian from Team 5 Maayong aga sa inyong tanan, I'm Irish Roxette M. Santos. Bag na adaw, kada kayo amin kakabsat, kitsak ni April Joy, kitata, ibaga kada kayo, tibasit mat nga naamwa. Good morning to all, I am Angelica B. Monteverde. Hello, I'm Daniela H. Marzan. Hi, good day to all of you, I'm Anki Merle Aguilero. Good day everyone, I'm Kit Guinness Pinala. Good day, my name is Ayla May P. Baloyot. Good morning, I'm Julian Gaing. Maganday Mahambat, I am Ayasa May Torres. Hello everyone, hi Professor Ramos, I'm Jane Demosia Kies from Bachelor of Science in Tourism Management, Section TF5A. Hello everyone, Marahay na Aldaw, I'm Marcricio Lucille G. Solis. Atya hao, washer Celine Elaine Fernandez, Walay Suka, TM5A. Hi everyone, my name is Celine Elaine Fernandez from TM5A. Naimbag nga Aldaw, kada tayo aming kakabsat. Siya ni Derek Villanueva, kinta takit, iparanad ko kada kayo, ikibasit nga ng muak. Maayong uto sa imong tanan, I am Jed Ann Ferni Salvador. Good morning everyone, I am Kizil Ann Purpose from TF5A. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joanna Marie Ligutom from TM5A under Dr. Francisco Ramos in Cruise, Leisure and Recreation Tourism. Hi, good morning, my name is Ira Peralta. Hello everyone, I am Andre Aiko. Good day everyone, I'm Richibel Ventura. For today's video, we are going to share our learnings for the preliminary period with our subject, Cruise Leisure and Recreation Tourism. So, what are you waiting for? Sit back and relax and enjoy the video. I'm going to talk about the basics of cruise ship. The introduction of intercontinental commercial airline services precipitated the rapid decline in the use of ships as a scheduled passenger transportation mode. Cruising has taken the place of scheduled liner services. Also, one of the main reasons people choose to work on cruise ships is the chance to travel from many places that they might not otherwise have the opportunity to see. They travel the world without paying for expensive hotels and food. That's why cruise tourism is one of the fastest growing segments of tourism industry that involves the luxuries for traveling on board. A cruise ship is with a specific prearranged itinerary wherein the cruise ship's class of several parts before coming back to its home part. That's why cruise tourism is one of the rising segments in the tourism industry. I have learned from what we have discussed is that cruise experience has a high rate satisfaction that excites our travel. I want to highlight my three S's, which is safe, social, and service-oriented people, which these are very important for us to take care of our guests. To guarantee that they are safe while on board, we need to install safety machinery, gears, facilities, and amenities. We must also learn to become hospitable. Through that, we could connect to our guests using our good communication skills and smiles in our faces that can never be scripted. Let's give them the good quality service that we could extend. Thus, treating people with kindness with right attitude always comes first. For the term that I'll be discussing, uh, that's going to be changing trends. So when we talk about changing trends in the cruise industry, this normally revolves around um, marketing um, for these cruise lines or for these cruise ships. So um, their main goal, of course, is to attract more customers. And one way of them to um, reach or focus on that goal is to, of course, keep up with the trends that we do have on the industry now as of now they're merely not focusing on the attractions that they could provide but they're also giving attention to the services that they could provide to the uh, customers now if they can provide good customer service to the customers then that would actually um, give them a really good reputation or it could provide them a good feedback basically on 
on um, their business and of course that would result into um, a good customer experience which of course they would have more repeat customers and those who haven't tried cruise ships would actually uh, be encouraged to try it as well so it's a win-win situation for them for the customer and also for the cruise ship so that's what you know changing trends basically is on the um, cruise industry so you need to keep up with the trends in order for your business to grow even more uh, you know, farther one of the key elements of the happy cruiser is, is to find the perfect line that is suitable for their needs but bear in mind that cruise lines falls into the various categories like resorts or contemporary cruise lines the modern premium luxury small niche and volumes in resorts or contemporary cruise lines they offer various schedules and itineraries that is perfect for the first timers younger adults and family cruisers sinking in different kinds of activities with a great volume for example mse cruise ship they offer a cheap mse cruises for about 40 dollars per person next modern ship or floating resort actually we can consider those cruise ships used for recreational and leisure voyage as a floating resort because of their amenities. However, it differs only to the brand and premium of services that they can extend to the guests. Usually, it can accommodate 5,000 passengers or guests and it has swimming pools, golf ranges, and climbing walls. My last examples will be premium cruise lines. It caters a more mature and discerning passengers, sinking a luxurious accommodations, and has dining, excellent services, extensive activities, and enrichment opportunities. The onboard experience is sophisticated, and the services is above average. And at somewhat, the prices is more higher than the usual contemporary cruises. So I learned that luxury is designed to satisfy every top class demand from people. Also, cleanliness is a must in every health of the passenger or a guest. And small liners is a five-star level of accommodation. It offers the best quality service that they could extend to the guest. Classification of cruise, which are niche also known specialty and value or traditional. Cruise tourism is growing at a furious pace. In order to provide a distinct product, niche or specialty cruises focus on a single aspect of the voyage, such as the destinations. Budget or volume brands typically use older, refurbished medium-sized ships with less amenities than new mega ships. The volume traditional cruise industry is defined by classic styled cruise ships, all inclusive convenience of a cruise holiday, attractive destinations to visit, and moderate affordable pricing. These ships are typically modest to mid-size and offer all of the amenities of a cruise liner at a reasonable price. The majority of ship serving guests in this category combine the charm and the intimacy of a classic cruise ship with the modern amenities and services. I'm going to share what I've learned for this prelim. So what I've learned for this prelim? I've learned the decks of the ship, the general level of ship that you can explore. First, the lead deck, swimming pool surrounding by facilities. Second, Empress, Riviera, Panorama, Veranda, that is what you call the room. Third, we have the promenade deck, the outside walkways. Next, we have the lobby deck. It offers restaurant, stage, and guest service. Next, we have the sky deck. It has a pool and golf course. Next, we have the sand deck. It offers sand tanning and fresh air. And last, we have the Atlantic deck. It offers lunch, restaurants, and bars. What are the facilities and services are there in a cruise ship? There is food and beverage, entertainment, fitness, and health. First is the food and beverage. There is restaurant, bars, and cafes. For the entertainment, there is theater, casino, and arcades. For the fitness and health, there is spa, gym, and medical services. There are also religious services, phones, and computer fax machines. And today, I will tackle about health, safety, and security. In 1970, Bessel Sanitation Program was introduced as a reaction to several severe disease outbreaks aboard on cruise ships. 
there's also a safety implementation that increase of security and more bureaucracy, longer lines of passenger to wait. But a higher level of security was planning and includes insurance of employee staffs. In additional, security equipment prevents security issue on board. The distribution system with the cruise industry, which is divided into three, the product services, market, and customer's identity. It will revolve around these three. For the products and services, they create their own unique brand that can catch or persuade potential customers to purchase their services. For the market, they will find their niche, for example, Disney Cruise Line, where the market is children or people of all ages. And lastly, Customers' identity, where they will identify who their customers are and what are their needs, wants, and preference. Cruise operators, like travel agents, to book their flights and also brochure to encourage advanced booking. Today, I will be discussing to you market segments. There are six market segments inside the cruise ship. First, we have is the restless baby boomers. Second one is the enthusiastic baby boomers. Third is the luxury seekers, fourth is the consummate shoppers, five explorers, and six ship buffs. Next we have is travel agents. Travel agents who specialize in cruises often form strong alliances with cruise companies. Cruise companies frequently support their agents through training, sales events. Next we have is alliances. Cruise operators may decide to form alliances with other vacation service providers. This is done to create more attractive packages or to create additional reasons for customer loyalty. So I've discovered that one of the most essential financial ratios related to the cruise ship is managing the hotel department. A cruise ship is similar to a hotel department because there is accommodation that is equivalent to a 5 or six-star hotel. The hotel department is in charge of everything linked to the ship's passengers, including entertainment, cuisine, and accommodations. Officers, managers, staff, and crew must all be sufficiently trained because they must ensure that the passengers receive the best and high-quality services in order to make them happy and satisfied with their experiences. This will result in gaining loyal passengers and, of course, financial profit for the cruise ship. Cruise ships offer a variety of onboard restaurants and dining options. Typically, the bigger ships will have more options, but even the smallest ships tend to have more than one restaurant. In general, a cruise ship will have a main dining room and a sit-down venue where you can order from a menu of American and continental favorites. Many people wonder if they can get room service at the sea. 24-7 room service are usually offered for free, while others might charge you a fee for pizza delivery and nighttime room service. In case you want to take your food to your cabin, you can ask a waiter to plate it for you. I learned and amazed that cruise ships can accommodate our dietary restrictions. Cruise ship's restaurants pretty much always have vegetarian options, such as low-carb, low-salt, vegan food, and gluten-free, is either available and noted or can be prepared with advance notice. For cruise guests, the possibility of live entertainment is a welcome thing. Onboard entertainment has evolved over the year. From live music shows, they now have a full-on theatrical performances and musicals. Aside from the bars and lounge, ships also have casinos and other adult team entertainment facilities just like you have on land. Vacations at the sea may be a good change from the usual daily routines. There, however, are aspects that you can do without even at such times. For this reason, many vessels have elaborate fitness centers and equipped gyms so you do not miss a day of practice. And finally, there are also other inclusions like onboard shops and luxury stores where you can get a very decent gift for you and your loved ones. My topic is all about yield management. 
yield management refers to all the way you price your product so that you can make more money with the same resources. By selling to the right type of guests at the right time and it is about making sure those accommodations are filled in the most profitable way possible. You will sell the right accommodation to the right market segment at different rates under various circumstances. Yield management is based on the theory of supply and demand which is the guests will pay different prices for the same thing. Depending on a variety of factors, therefore you can change your rates accordingly to get more incremental revenue. Without using yield management strategies, you miss out all the opportunities to get more bookings, offer competitive rates and promotions, and get more revenue per booking, and forecast the upcoming booking season. To get more profit, you need to sell enough accommodation to cover your fixed operating costs, then sell the remaining rooms at higher rates to maximize revenue and profits. Managing the operation. One key to a successful management is knowing the employees, understanding their attitudes and behaviors. Next is cruise destination. Today's ships are more like a floating luxury resort than a means of transportation. So it's safe to say that the cruise ship itself can be interpreted as the destination. For cruises from US, or United States of America, the most important cruise destinations are the Alaska, the Caribbean, and the Mexican Riviera. So I learned that alcohol on board is the sales of alcohol in the ship. And as a waiter, you can receive a small percentage on every alcohol beverage you cater. And the atrium is mostly the center area of the cruise ship, which has a skylight or glass ceiling and always has an eye-catching sculpture in the center. What I've learned in cruise leisure and recreation tourism, we have a lot of different terminologies. First, booking on board. Booking on board is a booking a next cruise at a discount rate while on board ship. Passengers can transfer their reservation to a travel agent to save even more money. One of the types in booking on board is booking a future cruise where you are picking a specific itinerary or sailing date. Second, next cruise booking. It is where you are not picking a specific sailing date. The bridge is the area on board the ship where the captain and his crew control the ship direction and speed as well as other functions. It is navigational control center in cruise. The captain is the only person allowed to sit in the captain chair. The next terminology that we have is a word that has letter C-A-Y, which pronounces key. This is naturally a small low island which consists of sands and corals. It is placed usually on top of coral reef. This typically occurs in the tropical environments, especially in the Caribbean areas. The next terminology that we have is the cruise director. The cruise director is in charge of the cruise ship's entertainment and staff members. Basically, they are the ones who organize and plan all the activities that will happen on board for the entertainment of the cruisers. They are often called as the face of the cruise ship since they are always present on social functions on board. When you are a cruise director, you need to socialize and be an outgoing person. A cruise director does not only limit their work on the entertainment side but also responsible for the behind the scenes duties related to the passenger safety and security. The overall work of a cruise director is to make the passengers happy while doing their managerial duties and at the same time be present on times of difficulties that affects the passengers. Cruise Terminologies Let's now hop on to letter D. The first D is debark. What is debark? It means to leave or exiting a ship and go ashore. While debarkation is leaving the ship at the end of the cruise or the ship. It's almost the same. The second and last word for the letter D is dry dock. A dry dock is a place to moor the ship or simply means where ships are taken out of the water when they need maintenance. You know cruise ships are made from steel and seawater is made from salt. So for a long period of time, the steel will go rust. 
They go to the jury dock because some types of equipment and types of machinery cannot be fixed by just using the available tools in the ship, especially the heavy pieces of equipment. Did you know what are the main areas they are checking? The following are Main engine Rudder Propeller Ship's hull Ballast tank or ballasting system Bow thrusters Mooring equipment Anchor chains or windlass Cargo equipment And many more It also depends on the planned maintenance system of ships what are the scheduled day should they inspect, repair, maintenance, and have a replacement. While in cruise ships, they have different maneuvering at mooring systems. They check sewage treatment and sewage system because it is the most important area of every passenger ship. Embarkation. Embarkation, from my own understanding, is an act of boarding the ship, more specifically, by a passenger. It can also be an act of aboarding for some crew of ships and airlines. Technically, it is two different words, boarding and aboarding, but it meant the same meaning. Enrichment. In dictionary, enrichment means enhancing the quality or value of something. And for me, if you apply enrichment in cruise, it more likely mean or technically mean that it is enhancing or improving one's experience by creating interactive workshops or presentations that is available or suitable for cruises. Thus, it makes cruising more enjoyable and interesting. So, in terms of cruise terminology, I'll talk about the family cabin and the fleet. For family cabins, specific accommodations vary, but family cabins typically accommodate four to six passengers in lower bed configurations. And for fleet, all of the ships belonging to a particular cruise line are collectively known as the line's fleet. What I've learned in our lesson, I'm going to show you the two terminologies I have learned. First, the gangway. It's typically used for two purposes to allow passage, enter, loading, and unloading of land-based trucks and train. Second is a gateway to place a use to reach their final destination. And it's a wrap. Lots of students in our course, which is tourism, always wanted to become a flight attendant. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. However, let's open our mind in cruise industry because truly it offers lots of opportunities that everyone can enjoy. I hope you guys learned something from us about cruise introduction. That's all for today. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe and hit that notification bell to keep you updated on our next videos. For more, kasiyahan at kaalaman. Agyamanak, paalam! Bye!